Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena game the video. Today we're taking a look at another historic deck, and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, we're taking a look at a deck built around Emil the Blessed, the 4 mana legendary unicorn from Jumpstart. It's a 4 4, and for 3 mana we can exile another target creature we control and then return it to the battlefield under its owner's control. So we get to blink one of our creatures for 3 mana, and whenever another creature enters the battlefield under our control, we can pay a hybrid green or white mana, and if we do, we can put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it. So Emil has a very powerful activated ability that synergizes with other creatures that have entered the battlefield abilities. And one creature in particular that synergizes very nicely with Emil is Thrilled Mystic, a 4 mana 3 2 elf lizard wizard with flash, and when Thrilled Mystic enters the battlefield, we can counter target spell. Very often, when we see all these creatures with Enter the Battlefield abilities, they're trying to synergize with a card like Thassa, which can blink one of your creatures end of turn to provide a lot of value, but Thassa doesn't really synergize all that well with Thrilled Mystic, since you're not gonna get to counter anything with the ability, but instead Emil can blink stuff at instant speed, which means that if we have a Thrilled Mystic and Emil on the battlefield, and 3 mana available, we can counter the next spell the opponent plays if we want to, by paying 3 mana and blinking the Thrilled Mystic, so if we have 6 mana available, we can counter the next two plays the opponent has, so we can very quickly lock the opponent out of the game and just counter every spell they play. So it's not a very friendly thing to do, but the end game of this deck can be very powerful if you can get to it. And then taking a look at some other powerful Enter the Battlefield abilities that we can abuse with Emil, we've got two copies of Thraktusk, the 5 mana 5-3 five, beast, that when it enters the battlefield it gains 5 life, and when Thraktusk leaves the battlefield, whether it dies or gets blinked, we get to make a 3-3 three, three green beast creature token, so if we can blink Thraktusk with Emil, we get to gain 5 life and to generate a 3-3 three, three beast token, so that's also very powerful. And then we also have two copies of Tolsimir, Friend to Wolves, a 5 mana 3-3 three, three legendary elf scout. And when Tolsimir enters the battlefield, we get to create a 3-3 three, three legendary wolf token. And whenever a wolf enters the battlefield under our control, we get to gain 3 life. And that creature fights up to one target creature we don't control. And of course, we can't forget about Emil's ability to place a plus 1 plus 1 counter on creatures that enter the battlefield. That also includes tokens. So we can potentially have a 4-4 wolf token that fights one of the opponent's creatures, as well as gaining 3 life. So Tolsimir and Emil also synergize quite nicely. And finally, we've got one copy of of Kiruga, the Macro Sage, a 5 mana 5 4 legendary dinosaur hippo. And when Karuga enters the battlefield, we draw a card for each other permanent we control with converted mana cost 3 or greater. So Karuga potentially makes for a very powerful card draw engine, especially if we have a lot of other creatures on the battlefield, like Frilled Mystic and Emil. Those all count towards drawing cards with Karuga. So these are some of the powerful enter the battlefield abilities that we can make use of with Emil. Let's take a look at the rest of the deck. Of course, our deck is pretty mana intensive. If we want to play Emil and use the ability right away, that's going to cost us 7 mana. So we better start with a turn to explore, so we can play an additional land this turn, and we also get to draw a card, and we also have the full playset of Grow Spiral, too good for standard, but still legal in Historic, a 2 mana instant that lets us draw a card, and then put a land card from our hand onto the battlefield, also synergizes nicely with our Frilled Mystic, as we can keep up all our mana, and if the opponent doesn't make us counter anything, we can just Grow Spiral instead, and to make sure we have enough lands to put in play with our Explore and Grow Spiral, we've got a total of 28 lands, so no short of lands in this deck. And then to round out our two drops, we also have two copies of Meddling Mage, which might seem like a bit of a weird addition here, but it's a great card against all the very linear combo decks, especially in Best of One in Historic. Meddling Mage is a 2 mana 2 2 human wizard, and as Meddling Mage enters the battlefield, we have to choose a non land card name, and spells with the chosen name can be cast. So if we're up against, let's say, a goblin deck, we can name Moxus and prevent the opponent from casting it against a very linear combo deck like Treasure Hunt or the various Song of Creation decks. We can also shut those down with Meddling Mage pretty easily. So Meddling Mage is mostly meant for those very linear combo decks. Then at 3 mana we've got two copies of Brazen Borrower. First we can use the Petty Theft Adventure for 2 mana, returning target a non-land permanent an opponent controls to its owner's hand at instant speed. And then we also get a 3-1 Flash Flying Fairy Rogue that can only block creatures with flying, and also provides a nice body to maybe draw an extra card with Keruga. 
Then we have two copies of Lenor Visionary, a 3 mana 2 to Elf Druid that when it enters the battlefield lets us draw a card and also taps for green mana and also makes for a nice target for a meal to just blink and draw an extra card if we don't have anything else going on. And then we've got three copies of Deputy of Detention. This is a May removal spell in the deck besides Tulsimir that can find stuff. A 1-3 Vidalcan Wizard that when it enters the battlefield can exile target a non-land permanent an opponent controls and all other non-land permanents that share the same name for as long as a deputy stays on the battlefield. So deputy is also a great answer to tokens as those will stay exiled even if the opponent removes the deputy and we can get rid of multiple tokens with the same name. So this shines against a deck like Field of the Dead where we can get rid of all the zombie tokens and then the deputy will stay in play and later we can maybe blink it with a meal and get rid of all those zombie tokens once again. Also great against uh, goblin tokens out of the goblin decks. And then we've got two copies of Uro, kind of a must-have in these blue-green ramp decks, as we get to play an extra land, draw a card and gain three life the first time we play Uro, and then later we can escape it out of the graveyard for four mana by exiling five other cards from the graveyard, and then we get access to a 6-6 six, six, that when it enters a battlefield or attacks, gains us three life, draws a card and puts an extra land on the battlefield. Then at 4 mana, of course, we've got our 3 copies of Emil. It's still a legendary creature, so we don't want too many copies, which is why we don't have the full playset. And then our full playset of Frilled Mystic, which is kind of the centerpiece of the deck alongside Emil, and is often kind of a sleeper agent that counters something, stays on the battlefield, maybe doesn't even attack or block all that often, but then as soon as we find Emil and have 3 mana available, it turns into a very powerful endgame finisher. And then at 5 mana, we've already covered our 2 copies of Thrak Tusk, or two copies of Tulsimir and the one of Keruga. And then the mana base, we mentioned 28 lands. We've got the full playset of Fabled Passage, which also synergizes nicely with Uro, putting an extra card in the graveyard, and then two of each basic to search up. The two basic planes are a bit of a nombo with Frilled Mystic, so I could see going down to one basic planes instead, but with 28 lands it's usually not an issue to make sure we have double green and double blue on turn 4. And then we also have one Castle Ventress as another mana sink in case we're flooding out and don't have anything going on. And then we've got one Glacial Fortress, one Sunpetal Grove, and the full playset of Hinterland Harbor, alongside all 12 Shock Lands with Breeding Pool, Temple Garden and Hallowed Fountain. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw with a decent hand. Turn to Explorer, turn 3 Frilled Mystic hopefully. Facing a ramp deck. Frilled Mystic's typically not bad against ramp decks as we get to potentially counter some pretty expensive things. And then, I guess I'll just play a castle for now. Next turn, Fable Passage can get forests. And it's going to be an Oracle of Moldaya. Alright, I might want to deputy that instead of keeping up Frilled Mystic. It's kind of a close call because it could potentially resolve something scary. So I think for now I'll keep up the Frilled Mystic. There we see a Nissa on top. So that's definitely a must counter. Another forest on top, they can play for free. Stone Coil coming up, and Karn the Great Creator. I probably have to counter as well. Probably play the Fable Passage, so if I don't have to Frill Mystic, I get to Scry with Castle at least. And then I'll trade a 3 for 2. Now a big Stone Coil Serpent I also can't get rid of with Deputy since it's protection from Multicolored, so that one I'll have to Frill Mystic as well. And then probably still get an Islands, thin out the deck a little bit, hope to draw a meal soon. Alright, or more Frill Mystics, I guess I'll take it. So next turn if I draw a meal, I can play it and flicker a Mystic. 
so we can experience this interaction a few more times. Could see a 2-2 stone call just to block. And yeah. Pretty happy with that outcome. More deputies. Alright, I guess we'll get rid of the oracle now. Although there is another oracle coming up, maybe I should wait. Alright, and then we'll just cry with castle instead. No attacks, because I can't get past the stone coil. More Nissas on top. Can we find Emil? Do I want a gross peril? Not really. I guess it's an extra card in graveyard in case we find Uro, but we don't have one yet. Let's just bottom it. Tulsimir, I'll take a Tulsimir. Now the token is multicolor, I believe. Yes, so I still can't get rid of the stone coil. But we'll get rid of the two oracles. And then probably don't want to attack here. Just to get in for six. Second deputy can get rid of Nyssa. Sadly, don't have blue mana to scry with castle this turn cycle. And then we're still looking for a meal. I will trade Mystic for land if they attacked. Let's play Visionary first. And then we'll just Deputy Nissa. Although my opponent can already cast some pretty scary things without a mana doubling effect. Alright, hopefully no Ugins incoming. I might scry on upkeep, although most of the things I care about I won't be able to play if I do tap my mana on upkeep. So I don't know if it's all that helpful. Plain White Celebration, getting back double Nissa Karn. Yeah, it's pretty strong. So do I scry on upkeep? Or no? I don't think so. I might end up just killing the citizen and attacking with everyone. Picked up an island. So let's see, I'll still be able to play Tulsimir and Scry with Castle. So can't take out Stone Coil, but I think I'm okay taking out the Citizen and then just smashing with everyone, including the Visionary. Bones at four. And hopefully nothing too bad happens to me here. Taking out the land to reduce mana for Nyssa is also a consideration, but then we don't get in for as much damage. So they still have six mana once they untap their forests. Make that eight. So yeah, the card we want to find is Emil. Opponent's got four blockers at the moment, so they are technically just dead on board here, if I'm not mistaken. There's Emil, right on time. So let's just double check, Point's got four blockers, block, 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 still takes four exactly. Yeah, it seems good to me. And I can always flicker stuff with Emil if needed. So I can flicker the Frilled Mystic that's being blocked by the Stone Coil. Alright, so it took a while to find Emil, but he did show up eventually, just to make sure nothing went wrong. 
but it would have been pretty fun here with double frilled mystic and Tulsimir in play. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a pretty good hand. Turn to Gross Parallel, maybe turn 3 Frilled Mystic already. If not, we'll play the Visionary. And we're up against potentially just Mono Rats. Don't see Firebrand and Goblins all that often anymore. So Tulsimir should be quite good in that matchup. Also, I've got uh, Thraktusk and Uro, so those are all excellent against a burn deck. And yep, there we see the Pyromancer, so... Monored aggro confirmed. So if I want to keep a Mystic, I'll probably have to shock myself, which is maybe not the best idea. So instead I can play Uro. Or I can just play Visionary, which blocks the Firebrand, and if it eats a removal spell, it's not too bad. Although playing Uro, if I find a land, I can guarantee Tulsimir next turn, which looks pretty great on this board. So let's Uro instead. Alright, so no additional lands, but if we draw one, we're still in great shape. Playing fire to the face for four, all right. Yeah, I think I'll shock myself to play Tulsmere here. If they have an experimental frenzy, we can get rid of it with Deputy. Another sling fire to the face, maybe enable spectacle too here. Nope, just a sling fire to the face. <laughs> Thrag Tusk against Monored. Yeah, that's gotta be the play here. Get in for six first, they might jump and deal one to me, which is fine. Yeah, we might see a concession as soon as Thrag Tusk hits the stack. They may be gonna shock the token here. Nope, I'm just going face. I mean, keeping up Frilled Mystic would also be fine here, but playing Thraktusk has to be better. Shocks my face, so yeah, they have no intention of uh, killing my creatures. That much is clear. Yeah, drawing Tulsimir and Thraktusk against the burn deck. Pretty good, but they did get me to 6 in the meantime. Make that 3. But we do a Frilled Mystic to counter their next burn spell. And we've got 11 power on the board. So as long as I don't mess up too badly, we should be okay. So Thraktusk and Tulsimir attack. That way I get to keep a Frilled Mystic and a blocker for the Paramancer. Or I can attack with everyone. But I'll have a two-turn clock regardless here. If I counter something that is... So I think we'll play it like this. Now the situation I want to avoid is where my opponent draws a lethal burn spell. They don't play it. And then they top deck another lethal burn spell next turn. And then I can only counter one of them with a mystic. But I don't think there's much I can do about that situation. So despite gaining 11 life with my Uro, Tulsimir and Thraktusk, my opponent still got me pretty low and would have had lethal if it weren't for the Mystic. So hats off to the burn player. But they do seem pretty dead on board here. Alright, sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with the reasonable hands. Lots of two mana plays. Hopefully Explorer can find something more impactful. And then I might as well fetch up a forest, although then I won't necessarily have double white if I draw a meal. But I think I do want to get this tap line out of the way. 
And double green's much more common than double white anyway. Alright. I guess I can play Island Explorer. And then next turn we'll have all our instants available, facing a teamer deck. And I'm not opposed to just flashing in a 3-1 here, keep up the pressure. Ooh, nice. Frilled Mystic, perfect. I think I will shock myself so I can potentially bounce and counter. Although it's unlikely that I'll need both. And then once we have Mystic in play, especially if we draw land next turn, I can play Meal and have the 3 mana ability up. Alright, it's gonna be double shock, but we do have Mystic in play now. Although shock means that they also have a cheap answer to my mystic if I go and blink it. So I'll have to be careful if I tap out. Tulsimir isn't bad. I think I still play a meal, although maybe I should wait until I have one more mana. Don't know if my opponent has counter spells on this type of deck. Right, let's just tap out for Tulsimir then. And then if I find another land, I can play Meal and activate right away. Uro is fine. And a Gross Spiral, so next turn they can maybe escape Uro, but hopefully we'll be able to counter it. Oh yes. A Meal. And attack. So I can flicker my Mystic to counter anything they play. Although if they have another shock, they could kill the Mystic in response to the ability. Well, I guess Niv Mizzet is uncounterable, but I can just bounce it, so that's fine. So I suppose I can just gain 3 life by blinking Tulsimir then. I guess I should have waited until end of turn to do this. And yeah, my opponent did have Curiosity, so I could have gotten punished pretty badly if they also had a 1 mana instant to follow that up. Because yeah, if I just kept up my mana, I can blink Frilled Mystic to counter Curiosity, and we're safe. And then next turn, even if I didn't have Brazen Borrower, I could blink Tulsimir twice, and then just deal 6 damage to Niv Mizzet with a fight, and take it out. But uh, yeah, got a little bit impatient by blinking Tulsimir in response. This game also showcased the power of Emil nicely, being able to blink the Mystic and Tulsimir. Alright, sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a decent hand. And we're up against Goblins. So cards we want to find against Goblins, Deputy of Detention can be nice, as well as our Meddling Mage to name Muxus. We do have some nice life gain, but that's not going to be enough if my opponent goes off with a Krenko. Although Tulsimir can fight Krenko, so that's also a great card in the matchup. And then Frilled Mystic, of course, as a way to counter their big plays like Krenko and Muxus, is a very good one too. Opponent doesn't risk attacking with a Prospector in case we have a Flash creature. And we just picked up Frill Mystic, so that's nice. So I'll be able to keep that up to counter a potential Muxus, which they could already play next turn technically. And if not, I can double Gross Spiral so my mana doesn't go to waste.
They're probably not gonna just slam down a Muxus here into four open mana after I shocked myself. So I don't expect them to, but I still need to respect the possibility of a Muxus. So I need to get a bit of a board presence going so I can block these goblins that are chipping in. And then I need to be able to keep a Mystic at the same time. No attacks, so showing a lot of respect for any flash creatures. There's Meddling Mage, okay. Perfect, so now I can play Meddling Mage, naming... I could name the War Chief that's on top of their deck, but I probably just name Muxus, although I kind of want them to play Muxus when I have a Frill Mystic in hand. Also, if they have multiples, that could be bad. Nah, let's just name Muxus anyway. And then keep a Mystic to maybe counter a Krenko. If they play War Chief, do I counter it? Maybe. Also, I can just find it with Tulsimir. So, definitely a delicate position, because... If my opponent has a jump on to kill Meddling Mage, they could still surprise me and play Muxes after all. So let the War Chief resolve. My opponent might start attacking with their two powered creatures now. If they play a Krenko, I'm definitely countering it. Yep. Alright, so this played out pretty well for me. Still have Muxus covered with Meddling Mage for the time being. And Tulsimir can fight the War Chief. Could also wait for them to play the second War Chief and then exile them both with Deputy. But it doesn't seem necessary. I get to gain a 3 life regardless of the fight happening. So if they want to sack it to the Prospector, that's fine by me. And then we'll send in the Frilled Mystic. Which I'm fine trading for Snoop. It's gonna be Ringleader. Finding Muxus, Matron, and Gem Palm, so we know they can kill my Meddling Mage. Uh oh. So we're in trouble. I need to find another Frill Mystic, or a meal to blink Frill Mystic. I guess for now I can deputy the Prospector, so they can't cast Muxus next turn. Although they probably wouldn't be able to anyway, since they first need to get rid of Meddling Mage. But using deputy on Prospector is just good here anyway. And then that leaves me enough mana for Visionary still, so let's start there in case I draw Mystic. Now we can't counter the cycle on Jump Palm. And I did draw Mystic, alright. So is the plan still to... keep up Mystic, or do I Deputy the Prospector? Given that my opponent first needs to kill Meddling Mage... I think I'm okay using Deputy on Prospector to... deny how much mana they have access to. And it also reduces the amount of goblins they have in play for the cycle on Incinerator. So I expect their next play to be play Wily Goblin, cycle Gem Palm killing Meddling Mage, and then set up for Muxus next turn, which they will be able to cast with the treasure and the land that's on top. But then we'll have the Frilled Mystic at the ready. Uh, they're just gonna play the War Chief for now. That's fine. So, can I play Thractus and have Mystic up? I can. And I probably tap the Visionary to make sure they can't kill it, and then I won't be able to keep a Mystic anymore if they move to a different phase and my floating mana goes away. So, let's start by... I guess, playing my Thractus. And 
and then we'll get in there. Still not gonna offer up my meddling mage for free. Opponents down to two, can counter their next play. And hopefully we'll have lethal. So they can mux us because of meddling mage. So they're gonna cycle incinerator, killing the deputy. So they have the mana from prospector. Again, we can't counter cycling. Instigator. I think that's fine. And matron. Sure. Might get another jump on to kill meddling mage. Or Krenko, which we can counter. They definitely suspect another frilled mystic at this point. But let's see how they navigate around it. Meddling mage still deals with Muxus. I can keep up the pressure with my Thraktusk and Tulsimir. And I think my opponent decided they can beat Frilled Mystic here. So they're just gonna jam Krenko. But this should leave them dead on board. Alright, and there we go. So we managed to dismantle the Goblins deck with some carefully top-decked Frilled Mystics. Sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play, and yeah, I'll keep this hand. So we've got Ramp into Mystic, plus a meal if we find another white source. And uh, Meddling Mage, if we're up against a combo deck, can also come in handy. Opponent with Mountain. Not sure yet if they're holding up Shock and their Burn deck, or if they might be a Goblins deck. So I'll wait on the Meddling Mage for now. Play Hallowed Fountain, and then next turn we'll be able to play Frill Mystic. Runaway Steamkin, alright, so they are a burn deck, and I think I caught a small pause on turn one, so they might have a shock in hand. So I could just play Meddling Mage named Shock, although it's just gonna die to another burn spell. So Meddling Mage is quite poor in this matchup. I think I'll just keep a Frill Mystic for now. Although Mystic can also get shocked, so killed pretty easily if we try to do any shenanigans with Emil. Cathartic Reunion, discarding Arc Light and Pillar, alright. Well, that's a nice one to counter with a Frilled Mystic. So they're not necessarily a burn deck, they're more a Phoenix combo deck. So now I've got a bit more info on what to name with Meddling Mage potentially. Also, Shock still takes out my Mystic. Alright, we'll just play the Deputy then. Get rid of the Steamkin before it picks up any additional counters, fetch up a Plains. And then I still need to figure out what to name with Meddling Mage here. So my opponent's playing Pillar and Shock. They might also be playing the various red one mana cantrips like Warlord's Fury and crash through. Probably not gonna name Cathartic, which they might not be able to cast right now. They've got equal amounts of Shock and Pillar of Flame in the graveyard, so... Yeah, this is kinda hard to tell. I could name Thrill of Possibility, which might also be in their deck. Yeah, let's name Thrill. That one's a little easier for them to cast than Cathartic, as it's only discard one and uh, is also likely a 4-off in their deck. There's the crash through. Alright, so I can play Emil and bounce the Paramancer. And then I'll be able to blink the Deputy or the Meddling Mage if needed. 
So I can maybe reset what I named with Meddling Mage. That's also the nice synergy between Brazen Borrower and Meddling Mage. You can bounce something and then use your Emil to reset Meddling Mage and name what they have stuck in hand. But yeah, opponent just concedes. We even just drew a Frilled Mystic, so I would have been able to counter their next play. But I can also blink my Deputy and then uh, exile both copies of Steamkin, as well as putting an extra counter on my Deputy. So that would have been pretty sweet. And then Fort Toughness, pretty difficult for the opponent to get past. And then we can pretty easily take over the game with Frilled Mystic and Emil. Sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play with double Meddling Mage which may or may not be good in the matchup we're facing, but the follow-ups here of Visionary and Uro are pretty decent, so I'll keep... And then the hope is that my opponent gives me some information with their turn 1 play on what to name with Meddling Mage. You can usually tell by the first land what type of deck your opponent is playing. And there we see Steam Vents untapped, so Opts and Shock are the likely scenarios. I'll name Shock just because it's a card I care about the most. Can take out my Frill Mystic or my Visionary. And my opponent didn't do anything end of turn, so likely means they do have Shock in hand instead of Opts. Play Visionary. Now one thing I didn't consider when playing the Planes is that it doesn't let me necessarily play Frill Mystic. So it's possible I should have shocked myself with a Temple Garden instead. Ooh, there's Emil. So if I don't attack with a Visionary, I can keep up Frill Mystic. And then Frill Mystic plus Emil is a big game. Can also decide to Uro plus play another Meddling Mage, perhaps. I think I will just keep up Frill Mystic. It's a little bit obvious with the way I didn't attack with a Visionary here, but that's fine. We're gonna Wizard's Lightning the Meddling Mage, let's counter that. So our opponent on a blue-red Wizard's deck gives me a bit more info on what to name with the second Meddling Mage. As we see Baron can bounce the mage and then they can shock the visionary. From their perspective, visionary is probably the scarier card than mystic. But as it turns out, when we have an Emil in hand, we care a lot more about our frilled mystic. So I've got five mana this turn. Don't want to trade mystic for Baron. Could tap out for Emil, but I want to wait until I can activate it right away. So let's just use Uro and uh, play meddling mage. And then probably name Shock again. They don't necessarily have another one in hand. But again, it's kind of the cheaper card for them to play. And easier to keep up, although Baron is a wizard, so Wizard's Lightning also works. But maybe that's the card we name with our second meddling mage. And next turn I could already play Emil and Flicker Mystic. Ooh, dual caster mage copying opt. That's a nice one. So the one thing that's a little bit delicate here is if I play meal with three mana up, sure I can blink my mystic, but if they have multiple burn spells other than shock, they can still kill my mystic in response. So I can feel too safe making that play. So maybe I'm supposed to play the second meddling mage first and uh, see if they have a response and then perhaps name Wizard's Lightning. Now they could also have the quasi duplicate dual caster combo which they can already pull off next turn. Make infinite two twos which I guess does kill me here. So I could also name quasi duplicate or dual caster mage. Maybe I just got to hope for one turn that they don't go for it. And then next turn I'll be shields up with Frilled Mystic. 
And then I think I'm still happy naming Wizard's Lightning. And then maybe I don't even cast the Explorers so I can represent another Frilled Mystic so they maybe don't go for the dual caster combo. Opponent passes. Alright, I think it's time. I think I'll even shock myself, because why not? Play Emil, hope they don't have a Wizard's Retort. Alright, Emil is in play. We've got Meddling Mage naming Wizard's Lightning and Shock. Hopefully those are all the burn spells they have. And then Emil can start flickering Frilled Mystic to counter their next plays. And eventually we'll find some more goodies. Essence Flux on Baron. Well, I guess that kind of forces me to counter it too. Otherwise they get to bounce another creature. And Naru can copy the Essence Flux, so they get to bounce my Frilled Mystic in response. I guess Naru plus Essence Flux is also an infinite combo, but it doesn't accomplish anything. They bounce the Meddling Mage with Wizard's Lightning on it. I guess I'll pay the one. And draw a Storm Conduit. Alright, so that can combo with Essence Flux and Naru to deal infinite damage. Or dual caster mage. We named Shock and Wizard's Lightning. Turns out they also had Essence Flux to combo off here. Thrilled Mystic and Emil are definitely much better if the opponent is casting a lot of expensive sorcery speed things as opposed to one mana instance. We were very close to having the lock. Just needed to untap one more turn. But now, I guess we're not dead yet. I thought this was an infinite combo. Maybe our opponent missequenced. Alright, and they exploded. I'll still give the win to my opponent, assuming this is actually an infinite combo. But uh, yeah, close one nonetheless. And we were very close to having the Emil Frilled Mystic lock with a bit of assistance from a meddling mage. So yeah, overall, the Emil Blink deck is pretty fun. Maybe not so fun for your opponents once you get Frilled Mystic in play, but it's definitely the best thing you can do with Emil once you get to a late game. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd. Thank you.